Thank you. I uh, call Parliament to order and we move on to our next item of business, which is topical questions. We start with question number one from Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it will take in response to the, rep uh, to the reported increase in the number of GP practices being run directly by NHS boards. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Uh, directly run practices are a legitimate way in which NHS boards can tailor services to meet local needs, ensuring that primary care services are provided to all patients. Wherever a practice hands back its contract, the local NHS board will ensure that primary care services will continue to be provided in the area and patients will be able to see a GP. If a practice can't routinely accept new patients, we're clear that boards must work with practices to help manage a situation and ensure that all patients are informed of options being considered. In support of general practice, I announced on the 10th of March investment of £71.6 million. This new funding forms the first stage of the Scottish Government's commitment to provide an extra £250 million in direct support of general practice per year by 2021 and will increase the investment in primary care by £500 million. Uh, by the end of this parliament, for the first time, at least half of frontline NHS spending will be going to community health services. Alex Cole Hamilton. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Further to the contributions we have just heard, I would like to put on my record, uh, on record my thanks for everything that our health and emergency services do for us. They do heroic work in our communities every day, and as we have seen so tragically overnight during the darkest of moments too, there won't be a soul in this building whose heart doesn't go out to those working today in the most testing of circumstances. They deserve the full support of this chamber and this government, but they don't always get it. Last year, doctors at East Craig's Park Grove Medical Centre in my constituency attached letters to prescriptions asking their patients to contact me for help. Such was the strain on that practice. Is the Cabinet Secretary confident that her government is doing enough to identify and to help surgeries in the early stages of distress before they have to be taken under health board control? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, first of all, pre Presiding Officer, can I uh, say to Alex Cole Hamilton that our uh, uh, NHS has uh, indeed offered uh, support to uh, services, the NHS within the, the Manchester area, particularly in the area of plastics and uh, paediatrics, where um, obviously these, uh, these specialties can be in short supply. So uh, to, to reassure the Chamber that that offer uh, has been made, as well as uh, beds within uh, Scottish hospitals if required. So we're uh, very much in touch with the, the services uh, down there. Uh, in reply to Alex Cole Hamilton on the specifics of uh, the, the medical practice and indeed support in the early stages, uh, yes, I have very much encouraged boards to have early discussions and indeed encouraged practices to have early discussions with the health board and to alert uh, the local health board uh, if they are uh, entering difficulties um, at an early enough stage to try to avoid uh, and to, to provide support uh, to try uh, and avoid some of the difficulties that we have seen. Uh, in reply to what we are doing, uh, Alex Cole Hamilton will hopefully be aware of the work, the intensive work that is going on around the new uh, GP contract negotiations. That is going to be very important in providing a, a better uh, future for primary care and for general practice within it and a more attractive proposition in order to attract young doctors into general practice rather than other specialties. Uh, we are also have uh, the GP Recruitment and Retention Fund which we announced is increasing fivefold from £1 million to £5 million pounds in 2017-18 and that investment is going to enable us to expand and continue to explore uh, the issues around GP Recruitment and Retention across Scotland which we know can be particularly challenging challenging in certain areas. Within that, there are a lot of initiatives, whether that's the GP fellows, whether it's the development of a locum pool of retired GPs in, in Lothian, it's the RCGP uh, uh, recruitment programme, uh, the GP returner scheme run by NES, uh, the new uh, national GP recruitment website, and there are a lot of local initiatives in addition to those that boards have taken forward. So I hope I can reassure Alex Hall Hamilton, despite some of these difficulties, uh, a lot is being done and will be done uh, so that we can encourage uh, young doctors into general practice and meanwhile support those practices that have challenges. Alex Cole-Hamilton. 
And I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer, and I'm very grateful for the information she shared with the Chamber, particularly in respect of the help being offered by Scottish health boards to Manchester. One of the commitments of the government's recent mental health strategy was to hire some 800 link workers at GP practices, A&E, police stations and prisons. As the Health Secretary knows, my party have stated our view that instead of link workers, we should seek to recruit talking therapists for GP surgeries to offer early intervention and de-escalate crisis situations. Given that one in four patients present to doctor's appointments with an underlying mental health condition, does the Cabinet Secretary agree that having a talking therapist on hand in a surgery would be far more useful in terms of reducing GP workload than a link worker who may only be able to refer a patient to the back of a waiting list for psychiatric treatment. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, let me say a couple of things about that to Alex Cole-Hamilton. First of all, the, the 800 uh, staff that uh, he described that the First Minister announced that will be uh, particularly focused around A&E departments, GP surgeries and indeed uh, um, in the, uh, the, the police environment in terms of not just the uh, the, the cells, but potentially also uh, when the police go out uh, to a call that may involve someone uh, with a, a mental health issue. Uh, the, those 800 staff will be of a variety of skills uh, and backgrounds and will be appropriate to what is needed uh, for that setting. Uh, what I would say to uh, Alex Cole Hamilton is that uh, the link workers, uh, as part of that, provide a, a very important role because they can often make sure that the person gets access to the right uh, resource, whether that is a mental health voluntary organisation uh, or a, a, a mental health service within the NHS. Um, so, it, you know, the link workers do an important job, but uh, we will make sure that the, the workforce that ha has been described um, is, uh, is appropriate for the skills that are required in each of those settings. Ben McPherson. Thank you. Can the Cabinet Secretary please outline any benefits of GP practices being run directly by NHS boards? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, um, GP practices run directly by boards uh, uh, help to ensure continuity of care for patients and connect those practices into a wider network of services. And that obviously helps to ensure that patients continue to receive safe, effective and timely care. And it can uh, sometimes be uh, the, a board's uh, contractual choice. So, for example, in Orkney, half of all practices in Orkney use 2C contracts. That are, those are uh, practices run directly by boards uh, because that has worked well uh, for, for Orkney in terms of the, being able to provide uh, the types of services needed by the local population. So uh, there can be benefits for practices run uh, directly by boards. Uh, and hopefully I've been able to uh, give Ben McPherson some examples of that. Donald Cameron. Thank you. Can I associate myself with the comments of Alex Cole Hamilton about last night's events, presiding officer, and likewise welcome the information just given by the Cabinet Secretary about assistance. Given that one in 20 GP surgeries are now under the control of a health board, this will inevitably lead to additional costs that require to be borne by health boards across Scotland. Has the Scottish Government quantified that expenditure and is the Cabinet Secretary satisfied that health boards are able to meet these costs? Cabinet Secretary. Um, yes, we are satisfied that the health boards are able to meet those costs because obviously we have uh, been expanding the resources going in uh, to primary care. Uh, I described the uh, investment in my initial answer for 2017-18 of, of an additional uh, £71.6 million. But of course that provides uh, the, the first stage of a commitment to provide an extra 250 million in direct support of general practice per year by 2021 as part of a, a wider 500 million pounds uh, investment. Uh, and of course, the health board would be contracting with the GPs to provide those services if they were under the independent contractor uh, status. So, uh, so they would be funding that through a different route uh, than they would be if they were providing those services directly uh, through the health board. So I hope I can give Donald Cameron assurance uh, that we are uh, working with boards to make sure sure that whether it is through uh, independent contracting or whether it is through uh, direct uh, provision of services through uh, health boards that we are committed to ensure that every community has access to good quality primary care services. Anna Sauer. 
Thank you, presenting officer. Presenting officer, my, my son is eight years old. I've seen the joy in his face at a concert, and I can only begin to imagine the tragedy that's going through every single family in Manchester. I also want to put on record our thanks to all our amazing NHS first responders. Um, people naturally run away from danger. These first responders run towards danger to help and care for their fellow citizens. Um, one of the issues raised regularly by GPs is around the obligations they feel around running a, a business practice rather than purely caring for patients. And one of those conditions is around looking after a property. Mm. Uh, and one of the requests that often comes is through the GP contract process, if the health boards can take responsibility for the properties and let the GPs get on with running the practice. Is that something that's been actively considered as part of the GP contract process? Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I uh, thank Anna Sabar, first of all, for his uh, early remarks, but um, for his question. Uh, he may be aware that the, the GP uh, Premises Short Life Working Group reported in December of last year, and the group recommended that the Scottish Government recognise and support a long-term shift that gradually moves uh, general practice towards a model that does not presume GPs own their practice premises. Uh, we're implementing the recommendations of that uh, short life working group and um, is moving to that, that service model. Uh, we're going to issue a code of practice to guide health boards when deciding whether to purchase a GP-owned property or take on some or all of the contractor's responsibilities under an existing lease. And we're going to be uh, issuing revised premises directions and we're going to carry out a nationwide survey of all GP premises to better understand the challenges facing the estate. So it is something we very much recognise and are working closely uh, with the BMA and others to uh, move forward on that issue. Thank you. Question number two, Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to improve cycling infrastructure in light of recent research by Sustrans Scotland, which highlighted that T-junctions and roundabouts possesses the highest number of collisions. Minister Hamza Youssef. Transport Scotland welcomes this report, which helps inform our partnership work with local authorities and Sustrans to make our roads and cycle network safer by tackling dangerous roundabouts uh, and junction. Local authorities are funded through cycling, walking, safer streets and encouraged to apply to Sustrans Scotland for further Scottish Government funding through the community links and street design projects for exactly these type of junctions and roundabouts. Our Road Safety Scotland Framework to 2020 midterm review identifies cyclists as a key priority area. Through our programme for government, we are committed to maintaining the record levels of funding and active travel, uh, which includes capital funding for improving infrastructure. Alexander Stewart. I thank the Minister for that answer. The Minister will be aware that in my own region of Mid Scotland and Fife, Dunfermline and Perth have been named among the top 20 cycling collision hotspots in Scotland. Can I ask the Minister why the Scottish Government is overseeing cuts to cycling infrastructure? Minister. Uh, I just have to clarify that misinformation uh, from the member, I'm sure, unintentionally, that actually, as I said in my previous answer, uh, if he'd heard it, that actually we have record levels of funding in active travel, 39.2 million per year to 2021. So there's a, there's, a, there's a record level of investment. I know that other members across the chamber will no doubt uh, want us sometimes to go further than that and where, that there, where there is additional expenditure uh, that I can find that can be spent on active travel, uh, I'll certainly do that. In terms of the region uh, that he, he represents, it would be worth highlighting some of the successful uh, projects that have been funded, uh, many of them through Sustrans, which again, uh, we help to, to fund in Fife and Cowden Beath. We've got the placemaking scheme, which is the redesign, redesign of the town centre. Uh, junctions uh, will, will, will uh, improve access. Um, looking at uh, other, uh, Rothis Road, uh, you know, an improvement of, uh, to the Toucan Crossing there, uh, which included money from Sustrans. Uh, that got links, community links funding of 870,000. Uh, Carnegie Avenue shared use path, um, you know, 1.2 kilometres uh, of new 2.5 metre to 3 metre shared use paths, further extension of the Clyde Dunfermline network. Uh, so there are, there's a lot of funding going into to, to Mid Scotland and Fife. I would encourage local authorities, uh, many of them with new administrations, many of them, of course, with existing administrations, to work with Sustrans uh, where there needs to be an improvement on the basis of the Sustrans report uh, and bid for this community. Uh, links uh, projects and funding that is available. Alexander Stewart. 
I thank the Minister for that answer uh, and also to thank him for identifying areas across my region that are being tackled. Uh, but there are still areas, Minister, that require to be tackled uh, and some additional support like traffic lights and other quality infrastructure around roundabouts and T-junctions have proven to reduce accidents and fatalities. Uh, and many cyclists have endured serious injury uh, or even death uh, because of the uh, areas that they've had to endure. So can I ask the government once again uh, to just clarify exactly what they're attempting to bring forward? Because as you say, Minister, in some parts it seems to be working, but in other parts it is not. Minister. I thank the member for that follow-up question. Th this report was commissioned because uh, we had good analysis and good data on where some of the cycling uh, hotspots and, and injury hotspots were on our trunk road network. What we didn't have data for and uh, what Sustrans thought was eminently sensible was to gather some of that data for local roads and that was the whole purpose of having uh, conducted this exercise. Now that we have the evidence, we're in discussions with Sustrans about what other schemes, so as well as a community link scheme which I've talked about, we're discussing with them about whether or not there's merits, for example, to have a community links junction improvement scheme. So that kind of scheme may be something uh, that, that would be of interest to local authorities. My, 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 my strongest advice uh, to the member um, would be that uh, he continues to engage with the local authority that I know he, he knows well. Um, look at the evidence base that Sustrans have provided and continue to apply to the current programme of funding that exists exactly for this type of infrastructure. And if there are other funds that are available, I'll make sure that the member uh, is, is made fully aware of them. But there is a, a pot of funding there that is available uh, to exactly to try to help. Uh, and I think with the evidence base that this uh, report uh, helpfully gives us, uh, that would make their case uh, very strong indeed. Thank you very much. Apologies to members. There's not enough time for additional supplementaries. Uh, the next item of business is uh, a debate on motion 5655 in the name of Julian Martin. We'll just take a few moments for members to change seats.